Christoph Heusken is the chair of the Munich Security Conference. I meet him here in Washington. Mr. Heusken, thank you so much for making time for DW again. It's my pleasure. Germany and the US have agreed uh, to provide long-range missiles to Ukraine. Do you think President Zelensky should be allowed to use them on Russian territory to defend his country, especially on the wake of the brutal attack on the children's hospital? It's, first of all, I think what is very important is whatever we do, we do on the basis of international law. And international law is very clear. Um, as long as Ukraine strikes um, military targets, um, as it is the victim of an aggression by Russia, it is, according to international law, absolutely legal. And um, why do we um, continue to stop and to, to keep um, um, Zelensky to defend his country in um, you know, taking into consideration what Putin does? You know, you just mentioned the hospital that was attacked. Uh, my Ukrainian friends tell me that this is the number one hospital in Ukraine where young cancer patients um, have been treated and um, Putin destroys this um, possibility to treat young patients and he does that just um, um, a day before the NATO summit starts. It's, so it's also a message to um, Washington. I think that he is um, kind of you know, laughing about us that um, we still um, refrain Zelensky from defending his country the way he should be. Zelensky is, of course, very happy and grateful for everything we are doing, and it's fantastic what we are doing, but why do we still stop him from defending him in an effective way? Yes, it's important to have uh, defensive weapons to try to see that they can shoot down incoming missiles, but why don't we allow him to actually destroy the launching pads of um, all these drones uh, that are sent, and why is he not permitted to destroy also the airfields from which Russian, um, Russian warplanes start to bomb as they did the hospital. So the question is there and um, I, I think it's, it's unfortunate that uh, both the US but also Germany are still reluctant to allow um, Zelensky to do what according to international law he could do and should do. So you say that he should be allowed to use missiles to uh, uh, target uh, uh, military uh, places on the border region in the Russian area? Not only on the border region. He should be able to defend his country. Every day Ukrainians are dying, small children are dying, and uh, um, Zelensky cannot um, defend his own people effectively because we stop him from um, you know, using the weapons in a way that is according to international law. At the NATO summit, an irreversible path uh, to a NATO membership of uh, Ukraine was also agreed on, a long discussion, but the communique was signed uh, on Wednesday. However, if Donald Trump gets re-elected and he were to agree that Vladimir Putin could keep Crimea and Donbas region and maybe other parts of Ukraine, uh, wouldn't this uh, pose a significant risk of a massive escalation? Well, um, first of all, there is nobody who can uh, decide for the Ukrainians um, you know, to give up territory. I mean, this is not for a U.S. president. This is Ukrainian territory. This is something where also the Americans have um, guaranteed uh, the national sovereignty and integrity of Ukraine. When Ukraine gave up nuclear missiles in 1994, they were stationed on its territory. It was the, uh, the Russia that guaranteed the national sovereignty and this is for the Ukrainians to decide. Um, on NATO membership, um, I think in the end um, a full NATO membership is the only insurance for Ukraine but also for countries like us who have now to spend millions, billions of dollars to, and euros to defend Ukraine. I think the only way that in the future Ukraine is safe, but we are also safe from new Russian aggression, is NATO membership. Let me explain this. Um, Putin has um, agreed in the past um, a number of uh, treaties, conventions, um, international um, agreements where he guarantees um, that he um, uh, respects the national sovereignty integrity of Ukraine and he has not respected one of these agreements. So even if now 
as I hope, the sooner the better we come to an agreement that ends this war, even there, nobody can be sure that Putin will keep to that promise what, or that the signature that he pays. So the only way that we can really in the long term have peace for Ukraine and also peace for us is NATO membership because this is the only thing that uh, Putin respects. So I think in the end we need NATO membership full stop. Some people fear that um, if Trump is back in the White House, which is just behind you, and he would kind of broker some kind of a peace deal with, uh, uh, with the rest of the world, mainly with Putin, of course, uh, that uh, Vladimir Putin, that Russia could keep, for example, Crimea. And the rest of, the, uh, of uh, Ukraine would be a NATO member. And then President Zelensky or someone else would try uh, to get Crimea and other parts back. That would then mean that NATO would need to jump in. Is this a worry you share? No, I mean, um, we don't need to look very far in, in the past. Look at Germany. Germany was, um, uh, became West Germany in 1955, became member of, um, of NATO. We were a divided country. Um, the um, reunification um, of Germany is part of our constitution, was part of our constitution. And um, um, it was very clear, and it was also very clear um, in, the, in, the our, in the our treaties that, yes, um, the NATO would defend West Germany from um, uh, when it would be attacked. And you remember when um, um, there was even before the foundation of NATO, when uh, there was a blockade of um, East Berlin, when the wall was um, uh, built and uh, West Berlin was also tried to be isolated from the rest, you know, the, the Americans stood there to defend it. But it was very clear that if West Germany had thought, nobody thought about it, but if Germany, West Germany would have thought, okay, now we try to conquer East Germany with military means, no way that would have been covered by, by NATO. So it worked out with Germany. Why not, um, uh, why not uh, trust uh, the Ukrainians as much as um, uh, we were trusted in Germany? I think it's an intellectual arrogance, um, the argument, well, you cannot trust the Ukrainians. Yes, you can trust them. This is a people that has to defend itself. And by fighting against uh, Russia, by fighting against Putin, who has said that he wants to reestablish uh, the former Soviet Union, which includes NATO members. Um, therefore, the Ukrainians are defending our, our security. Talking about uh, Donald Trump, what concerns do you have regarding the implications of a possible return uh, to the White House on the global security architecture? I belong to those who refuse to speculate there. Um, there is um, um, one um, one thing is clear from the, um, uh, from the time that President um, Trump uh, was in office, and that is you cannot calculate what he does. So he can do one thing one day, another thing the other day. Now to think what Trump uh, will do, I think this is pure speculation. What we need to do is to concentrate on us. You know, we need to do what we already um, committed to 10 years ago um, after the annexation of Crimea by Russia that we said, OK, now Europe has to step up to the plate. We have to um, have our military capacities to defend ourselves, to play a more important role within the alliance. And we need to continue that. We dragged our feet a long time to really advance in this direction. Now more things have happened, but we have to do more so that we are ready. Um, what Chancellor Merkel already in 2017 said that, you know, we have to be ready for a situation um, where maybe the US for one reason or another decides not to get involved when our security is under threat. So we have to do our homework in Germany and Europe. How much longer does it take before this homework is done in Germany and Europe? This depends on the willingness of, um, uh, of uh, the German government and other governments to actually uh, um, do what they have committed to, spend um, a minimum of 2% on defense. We are doing this um, this year, uh, maybe next year. But then, um, you know, when this um, special budget for defense is uh, exhausted, then we need to do it from the regular budget. And there we see with the budget that has just been agreed upon in the cabinet um, that when it comes to the regular defense budget, um, we are not where we have to be. 
and the defense minister, Mr. Pistorius, has been very clear that he's very worried about that decision. And I hope that um, the budget, uh, you know, the budget um, competence lies with the parliament, that the parliament has um, actually then the courage to rectify what um, the government has proposed. Sticking with Germany for a moment, um, the reputation of Germany's willingness uh, to provide as much money and support uh, as it should is not the best. Let's put it that way. You just mentioned uh, our defense minister, Pistorius. Um, why isn't the government, why isn't the parliament willing to pay more in this very moment? Politically, it is very difficult um, to actually implement this commitment because um, in particular when we are in, a, in an economy where you don't have a strong growth rate, if at all, when you um, increase uh, spending for defense, um, you have to do it at the expense of um, other uh, expenditures. Of course, uh, Germany in comparison with other countries has, a, has a, a much lower debt rate, so there is some space, but you cannot um, you know, just with increased debt pay in the long run for all the um, defense um, obligations. So we need to have a discussion in politics, we have to have a discussion in society, how much, how, how high do we value security. And um, um, when you look at the discussion we have in our country and you compare that with the discussion in countries that are much closer um, to Russia, you see the difference. You know, in, the, in the Baltic countries, from left to right, all um, parties, same in Poland, all parties know how uh, imminent the Russian threat is, how real the threat is. Look at the Scandinavian countries, look at you know, how Finland, after seeing what the aggression of Russia towards Ukraine was, how they changed from uh, one day to the next and are now NATO members, same with Sweden. They spend a lot, the Norwegian, everybody. And in, in Germany, we somehow still believe, well, somehow, you know, we don't need to, um, in the end, some, somehow we will solve this problem without uh, needing this, um, this discussion and making some tough decisions. This is something that um, um, we have to have this debate. There's, of course, the AFD in, in, in Germany. What do you say or what do you tell those who say, wow, how reliable is Germany in the future? Uh, when it has a party with 30 or so percent. How do you respond to, uh, respond to that? No, we have to be very clear. We have to, I think we, we um, must not avoid a discussion. We have to have a discussion. We have to make clear that the AFD is on the Russian payroll. I mean, there were after the annexation of Crimea, which was um, you know, a, a, a violation of international law. It was AFD parliamentarians who went to Crimea to um, support Russia's claim. So they are on the Russian payroll and we have to make it, we have to make it clear um, and uh, tell the, also the people um, that when they vote for AFD, they are supporting Russian interests. Talking about the influence of Russia, there's Viktor Orban, of course, who just met with Vladimir Putin and is now meeting or supposed to meet with uh, the former U.S. President uh, Donald Trump. Um, how worried are you about his destabilizing influence in Europe? Let's not overestimate it. It's a nuisance value. It's a small country and, and um, Orban is, a, is a, you know, um, to certainly it's, it's, a, it's a clown who runs around and we let him do it. it is unacceptable that Hungary is one of the largest um, beneficiaries of the European Union, of um, uh, the internal market, of all the funds that also go there. And then on the other hand, from morning to night, he undercuts uh, European unity. He is um, arguing against um, European values, against European policy. And now he um, abuses um, the EU presidency by even, you know, putting all his crazy tweets out under um, you know, the heading of the EU. So we, we must not accept that. Um, I think as a democracy, as a democratic union of nations, um, we have to fight the enemies of democracy much more than we have, we have done so in the past. Mr. Heuskin, uh, you have negotiated with many world leaders throughout your long career. How much damage does the debate about President Biden's fitness uh, cause to the international reputation uh, of the United States? 
It's an unfortunate debate. Um, the United States is the most important partner um, for, for Europe. It's an important um, trade partner. It's a key country in G7, G20. The world looks at the US and to have this debate right now um, is not helpful. Um, we need a strong um, and we want to have a strong um, US um, leadership and right now um, we have this unfortunate discussion internally. I just hope that um, this discussion will soon be ended. What we need, of course, is um, reliance. We, we want to make sure that this relationship continues um, uh, to be as close as it is, and we don't want to be distracted um, by these leadership questions. So the sooner the question is resolved, the better. Mr. Heusken, thank you so much. Es war mir eine Freude. It was a great pleasure. Thank you.